Welcome back to the Kennedy Dynasty Podcast. I'm your host, Allison. And today I've got an episode that I'm excited for you to listen to. This is a topic that I have not covered yet at all, so it'll be interesting to dive into for sure. Before we get started, though, let's start out with our In the News segment. Big news story of the past seven days. This was really cool. Jack Antonoff wore a Bobby Kennedy campaign pin at the 2023 Grammys, and this is via Town & Country. It was really cool that he decided to wear a Bobby Kennedy pin. He worked with Taylor Swift on her recent album, and of course we know Taylor Swift's connection to the Kennedys. She dated Connor Kennedy for a minute, has always been a Kennedy fan, and Carrie Kennedy actually reposted a photo of Jack Antonoff and Taylor Swift at the Grammys and said she thought it was cool, basically, that he wore a Bobby Kennedy pin. Jack Antonoff has collected Kennedy memorabilia over the years, and he was once quoted saying to the New York Times, there's just such a heavy cultural context that comes along with it that makes you think of so many hopeful, tragic, bizarre elements of what it is to be an American. He's become a really interesting symbol to me in his complication that he was talking about JFK in that quote. So pretty interesting. Go check out the article. We love a modern Kennedy nod, don't we? Next up, our inspiring clip of the week. One of the inspiring notes. This is President Kennedy at Vanderbilt speaking about the responsibilities of educated citizens in May of 1963. But the educated citizen knows how much more there is to know. He knows that knowledge is power, more so today than ever before. He knows that only an educated and informed people will be a free people. That the ignorance of one voter in a democracy, impairs the security of all. And that if we can, as Jefferson put it, enlighten the people generally, tyranny and the oppressions of mind and body will vanish like evil spirits at the dawn of day. And therefore, the educated citizen has a special obligation to encourage the pursuit of learning, to promote exploration of the unknown, to preserve the freedom of inquiry, to support the advancement of research, and to assist at every level of government the improvement of education for all Americans, from grade school to graduate school. So let's get to the episode. Anya, my researcher extraordinaire, had the idea to do an episode on JFK and women's rights. And I thought we had an awesome opportunity to dive into that with this episode. So it won't be super, super long, but uh, hopefully super, super informative. And remember, as always, make sure that you go do your own research. Send me anything that you find because we're all in this together, this learning journey. But our sources today are LA Times, Now.org, Britannica, JFK Library, History, Miss Magazine, The Atlantic, Huffington Post, The Bridgehead, and that's it. So let's get started. As many of us know, the Kennedy administration was dominated by men, despite the fact that JFK assumed the presidency at the beginning of the second wave feminist movement, which actually centered around equality of opportunity for women, particularly in the workspace. There were women that worked in the White House, of course, but only nine of the president's 240 appointments were women, and none of these women were appointed to top posts within the cabinet, even though Eleanor Roosevelt had devised a three-page list of women who would have been suited for such roles. God, I love Eleanor Roosevelt. We could do a whole series on her. Also, I just have to note, Jackie was a huge asset to the Kennedy administration as well, even though she was not technically employed. Uh, We know that she did all the things. Love her. Anyway, however, Kennedy recognized that the realization of women's rights was central to the country's wider commitment to freedom, and therefore he took a number of steps to advance the women's rights movement during his presidency. So, in 1961, JFK passed an executive order establishing the President's Commission on the Status of Women, to which Eleanor Roosevelt was appointed as chair. I'm actually going to have a guest come on hopefully this year who is extremely well versed in the relationship between Eleanor Roosevelt and JFK, which was a tumultuous one if you've done any research on it. So I'm excited about that. I'm also going to insert a clip here of Eleanor Roosevelt interviewing JFK. I would like to ask you because I have always been interested in women's affairs and I was very much honored when you made me chairman of your new committee on the status of women. Perhaps you'd be willing to tell the people what prompted you to name this committee at this time and what you feel is the real need for it. Well, we are attempting to uh, make sure that the 
women, for example, who work. Uh, one third of our working force are women. We want to uh, try to encourage uh, every company in the United States and certainly uh, stimulate uh, governmental leadership in providing equal pay and equal conditions for women. 22 states do it now. We can do a much better job on that. We want to make sure that the available talent which we have in this country uh, in trained women is being used effectively. I think we want to uh, make sure that uh, some recognition is given to the special problems women have as the mother and the housewife, and at the same time uh, their desires to participate usefully in public and private life. This is a matter of great national concern, and I think that in this uh, great society of ours, we want to be sure that we that women are used as effectively as they can to provide a better life for our, our people, in addition to meeting their primary responsibility, which is in the home. So JFK had been urged to create a bipartisan commission, which was responsible for developing recommendations for overcoming discrimination in government and private employment on the basis of sex. And he was urged by Esther Peterson, the director of the Women's Bureau of the U.S. Department of Labor and the Assistant Secretary of Labor for Labor Standards. The 26 members of the commission included educators, writers, leaders of women's organizations, union leaders, cabinet members, which included Bobby Kennedy, and members of the Senate and the House of Representatives. On the recommendation of the President's Commission on Women's Rights, JFK ordered federal agencies to end employment discrimination on the basis of sex. And this was at a time whereby men only and women only positions were being advertised by employers. Can you imagine that? Like, I, st- I know we still got a long way to go, but man. We have come a long way since then. JFK also passed the Equal Pay Act in 1963, an amendment to the Fair Labor Standards Act, which was done in 1968, I'm sorry, 1938, which prohibited pay discrimination in federal jobs on the basis of sex. Now, get this, before this, for every dollar earned by a man, a woman would earn approximately 60 cents, but the legislation mandated equal pay for equal work. That is a big pay gap, especially during those times. President Kennedy said that the passage of this legislation, which received opposition from business groups such as the Chamber of Commerce and the Retail Merchants Association, was a significant step forward, but that much remains to be done to achieve full equality of economic opportunity. Nonetheless, it was still one of the very first laws to address gender discrimination. Go JFK! President Kennedy did not adopt the commission's recommendations to introduce universal child care and paid maternity leave, though it is important to note that the Peterson report was published in October of 1963, six weeks before he was assassinated. And he had previously expressed his support for child daycare centers, which would allow mothers to pursue their potential beyond the home. Fellow mamas out there, fellow working mamas out there, y'all know how it is. (laughs) We still have a long way to go with that, too. So by 1967, all 50 states created their own commissions on women's rights. These eventually merged and became the National Association of Commissions for Women. When the President's Commission on the Status of Women was disbanded in October of 1963, JFK signed an executive order establishing the Citizens Advisory Council on the Status of Women and the Interdepartmental Committee on the Status of Women. We do have to note, though, regardless of his commitments to equal pay and opportunities within the workplace, Kennedy still held and promoted the traditional view that the primary responsibility of women is in the home. Also, if you've listened to the Jackie Schlesinger tapes, you know that I love those. She talks quite a bit about that as well. And Caroline Kennedy actually addresses that in the foreword where she didn't want to edit out her mother's words or edit anything. But obviously, times had changed and she felt that her mother would have had a more progressive mindset had it not been recorded in the 60s, essentially. Another thing to note, JFK did not explicitly support the Equal Rights Amendment as it was opposed by the labor unions whose support he depended on. Teddy, however, did support the ERA and was instrumental in ensuring its passage through the Senate in 1972, although at that time the Constitution still had not been amended as it had not been passed by three-fourths of the states. Now, JFK was assassinated before the Roe v. Wade Supreme Court case and before abortion rights were considered to be a mainstream issue, so his thoughts on the matter are not well documented, though he did once say that abortion would be repugnant for all Americans. Once again, though, Teddy was a prominent supporter of Roe v. Wade, despite the opposition of the Catholic Church towards abortion. Now to Boston as we show you live coverage of the debate between Democratic incumbent Edward Kennedy and his Republican challenger, Mitt Romney. 
I believe that abortion should be safe and legal in this country. I believe that since Roe v. Wade has been the law for 20 years, that we should sustain and support it. And I sustain and support that law and the right of a woman to make that choice. On the question of the choice issue, I have supported the Roe v. Wade. I am pro-choice. My opponent is multiple choice. When, uh, Mr. Romney, are you going to tell the people of Massachusetts which health care program you favor? I have a plan. I have a position paper on health care. I'm happy to show it to you, Senator, anytime you'd like. Mr. Romney, it isn't a question of showing me your paper. It's a question of showing all of the people in here that are watching this program the paper. Well, they can get They ought to have an opportunity to know. Yeah, and I think it's a, a wonderful idea to, to take it through piece by piece. And, uh, and that's what you have to do as legislators. I understand. That's exactly Senator. what you have to do as legislators. The contraceptive pill was also legalized during the 1960s, which that's crazy to me. Like, that's not that long ago that, that birth control <laughs> was available in pill form. So that's, that's very recent history. I guess I always assumed that it had been around longer, but learned something new. While JFK stated that he opposed birth control due to his religion, he did make it clear that he would not impose his views on others and that he would, quote, not obey restriction of access to contraceptives. Okay, guys, that's all I've got. A lot of information in there. You might want to listen to that twice to be able to pick up all the names and legislation and everything. But um, I hope that you learned something new today. Make sure you send anything else that you learn to me. I always love to learn alongside you. We've got a fun episode coming up next week for President's Day. Jeffrey's going to join me and bring some history, so that'll be fun. And then we have a few other really cool scheduled out episodes. It's going to be a fun year for Kennedy Dynasty. Stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss when episodes release because I'm the worst at posting on a consistent schedule. So they are sporadic throughout the week. And if you subscribe, then they'll just download and be perfectly there and it helps me and helps you please leave a five-star review if you have not and write a positive one if you want to just be extra nice um, that would be great that helps me and helps other people see the show i hope you have a great week and i will talk to you soon come on and vote for kennedy vote for kennedy keep america strong kennedy he just keeps rolling up Oh